All right, so what I have here is the tangent of 17 pi over 12 equals tangent of 9 pi over 4 minus 5 pi over 6, right? So what we did is we broke up 17 pi uh, over, f we broke up 17 pi over 12 so we could rewrite our angle as a difference of two angles. Now the reason why we can do that is because when, or the reason why we'd want to do that is by looking at, we have a formula for the tangent of the difference of two angles. So we can now evaluate for the tangent, we can evaluate for the tangent of the difference of two angles because the tangent of 17 pi over 12, that's not something that we could evaluate for. Um, by knowing, at least using our unit circle, um, algebraically, we're get, we'd probably have to go and approximate our value for it. So what we're going to do is, when first doing this problem, we want to make sure we have the correct formula written down there. We have our angle that's broken up. And we, so we can write this as a u minus v. So this is the same thing as tangent u minus v. We could say, all right, well, here's our u and here's our v. So all I'm simply going to do is now replace my u's with 9 pi over 4 and my v's as 5 pi over 6. So I can say tangent of 9 pi over 4 minus 5 pi over 6 is equal to the tangent of 9 pi over 4 minus the tangent of 5 pi over 6, all divided by 1 plus the tangent of 9 pi over 4 times the tangent of 5 pi over 6. So does everybody follow me what I did right there? Yes. Just taking in our angles and then plugging them in. Now, our next step is we need to evaluate for what's the tangent of each one of these angles. So to do that, let's go back to our unit circle and determine where is 9 pi over 4. Well, 1 pi over 4 is here. Here's 2 pi. Here's 3 pi. Here's 4 pi. 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi, 8 pi, 9 pi. So 9 pi over 4 is all the way around and then back up again. It's more than one revolution. However, the coordinate point at 9 pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. So we could say the tangent of 9 pi over 4, actually, 1. One thing we need to remember about tangent is the tangent of any angle, the tangent of theta is equal to your y coordinate over your x coordinate, right? For any one of these coordinate points. So now, if I want to find the tangent of 9 pi over 4, that's equal to square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2, which equals 1. Follow me? Now, let's go and look at uh, 5 pi over 6. Well, 5 pi over 6 is going to be right there. And 5 pi over 6 has a coordinate point of negative square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Right? No? Yes? Sure. Yes. So it has a negative square root of 3 over 2. So you could say tangent of 5 pi over 6 is equal to my y coordinate, which is 1 half, divided by my x coordinate, which is a negative 3 over 2. Rationalize in the denominator, I get negative square root of 3 over 3. Okay. I just don't have enough kind of space. But remember, you multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, and you get negative square root of 3 over 3. So now what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to plug in 1 in for my tangent of 9 pi over 4, because that's the evaluated value. And now I'm going to plug in a negative square root of 3 over 3 in for 5 pi over 6. So 9 pi over 4 is now going to be 1 minus negative square root of 3 over 3 divided by 1 plus 1 times negative square root of 3 over 3. So you guys see how all I did was just plug them in? Yes? Just plugged in the values for each one. Now the next thing is we have a fraction divided by another fraction. We need to get rid of those fractions. So we look at our denominators and say that we have denominators of 3. So to get the 3 off the bottom, we're going to now want to multiply our numerator and our denominator by 3. As long as I multiply the top and the bottom by 3, I'm not going to be changing my answer at all. Yes? Because I need to get these fractions off, right? It's like multiplying, it's like saying 1 half divided by 3 fourths. You, you can't have, you don't want to have fractions on your top and the bottom, right? So we get rid of the fractions. How do you get rid of 
this fraction. Well, if I multiply by 3, that's going to eliminate that fraction. So if I multiply by 3 on the top and the bottom, then I'm now going to get a new answer of 3 plus the square root of 3 divided by 3 minus the square root of 3. Does everybody see that? 3 times 3 is 1. 3, these are now going to divide out to 1. And then a minus a negative is going to give me a positive square root of 3. And then here, 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times negative square root of 3 over 3. The 3's cancel out, or cancel, divide out to 1. And then I'm just left with the minus. All right? So now let's go back through and multiply, or to go through this. So we're almost done, except now you guys can see I have 3 plus the square root of 3 divided by 3 minus the square root of 3. To get this, to finish this, we need to multiply by the conjugate. So now I need to multiply by the conjugate on the top and bottom. So let's go and do it up top. So multiplying this on top, you need to make sure you apply FOIL. So therefore, I have 9 plus 3 square root of 3 plus 3 square root of 3 plus 3, which ends up giving me 12 plus 6 square root of 3 when I combine my like terms. The next step is let's multiply by these. But remember, when I multiply the bottom or my denominators, what I'm going to have is a difference of two squares. So rather than having to apply all my FOIL, which you can, there's nothing wrong with that. But instead of my middle terms adding up, I know now my middle terms are going to cancel, are going to uh, add up to 0. So I don't need to write them in there. I can simply say I'm going to have 9 minus 3, which equals 6. So now my new numerator is going to be 12 plus 6 squared of 3 all over 6. Then I divide the 6 into both terms. And my final answer is going to be 6 plus the square root of 3. I'm sorry, 2, not 6. So all you do is factor 12 plus 6 times square root of 3. Hmm? No, yeah, the 6 no. divides into both those terms. Then what was the whole 3 minus square root of 3? I had to multiply by the conjugates. Multiply this times this, and that times that. But we don't want to have a, a binomial with an irrational number in the denominator. So we multiply by the conjugate. No, no, I got that. Whatever you multiply on the bottom, you have to multiply on top. I did my mathematics right here. You can see how I got my new numerator and my new denominator. Okay. Yeah, I did FOIL and all that kind of stuff. Whatever. Cool. Questions?